Now then, people, welcome back to another episode of the Daily Leads. It is Friday, the 23rd of July. Leads have another confirmed signing, signed, sealed, delivered. I'm yours. Before we do get into that video, I'm assuming you all know who it is, but anyway, we've got loads in today's video, just like yesterday. I just want to shout out everyone who watched yesterday's video as well, like the view duration was up, the views, the likes, all that sort of stuff. It keeps growing. So thank you so much for your support. It means the absolute world. Before we do get into today's, as always, like, subscribe, comment, all that jazz. Let's get into it, baby. So guys, as promised, as I said, right at the start of the video, Leeds yesterday made the announcement at the signing of Lewis Bate from Chelsea. England Youth International penned a three-year contract. Initially, we'll join up with Mark Jackson's under-23 squad. Listen, this kid is one of the most highly rated young English players around, and he's been lured to the project at Four Parch. It's another scouting success, you know? We have managed to acquire so many decent players that have had other options on the table, and it just shows the potential and, and the how much of a good place Leeds United is in at the moment? How many years have we had to deal with our best talent going elsewhere? I mean, just look at the under 23s, um, you know, players that we've brought in over the past, you know, 24 months. You know, Geldart, Drama, Greenwood, Somerville, Amari Miller, Sean McGurk, and now Lewis Bate, you know. And none of these players were short of suitors. None of them. Some of them were wanted by top six clubs and they chose Leeds United. And Lewis Bate, genuinely, like, I, again, I've not seen a lot of him. I get them, uh, you know, I get this information from others that, that watch him regularly or have seen more about him. Big shout out Tom at Focus on Leeds, for example, who did, you know, a a, a, a quick Twitter thread on him, you know. Um, and, and this kid, like I, I'll repeat myself again, is one of the most highly rated young English players around. We heard from Lewis Bate himself as well on signing for Leeds. He said, look, I know Bielsa's methodology and how he wants to play, and I think it suits my game. I'm fast in terms of how quick I think when the ball comes to me, knowing the pitcher. I'm a good passer, and I like to get stuck in. Yo, it's Pablo Hernandez. It's Pablo Hernandez Mark II. Then players that already are three passes ahead. Do you know what I mean? If it's me, he's already 20 passes ahead of me. But in the probably in his age range, he's a couple of passes ahead of his players. Genuinely, really excited by this kid. Maybe we'll see him this season. Who knows? I do think, out of the crop that I've mentioned, I do expect us to see Joe Geldart at some point this season. I do. Um, age isn't a thing for Bielsa. If they're ready and if there is an opportunity for them to come into the side, they will be used. I think we were quite lucky last season in terms of injuries to key personnel. Had we have had injuries in key areas, then these young lads would have been used. They're ready, you know, to be just thrown it straight into the setup. Um, so, yeah, I think we will see someone like a Geldart breakthrough. But listen, I'm, again, just really excited by the signing of Lewis Bate. Um, and, and hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll get to see him in a cup game, maybe. Um, I'm hoping at some point I can get to an under-23s game this season as well. I think uh, the members, you get the opportunity to see the under-23s and the women's team at Ellen Road. So whenever they do play their games there, I know they play quite a lot of four parts. But if there's an opportunity to go watch them, at Ellen Road, then I'm I'm on board with that because I can't imagine it would be a, a lot to get in. So, yeah, uh, well on board with that. So, if I do get to see him in the flesh or, of course, watching on social media, we can we can talk a little bit more about him. But, yeah, look, I'm buzzing with the signing of Lewis Bate and I think a lot of you guys are as well. I did a poll and, um, look, not a lot of us are going to sit here and say, oh, yeah, we've seen every single game he's played. But it is an exciting prospect and one that I can't wait to see pull on the lead shirt in the first team in a couple of seasons' time. Maybe at the end of this season, who knows? Um, but when you're acquiring such talent from top six sides, let's not forget Chelsea won the Champions League, you know. Um, when you're getting players that are well thought of at that club, I, I, I read that he was one of Jordi Morris's favourites. That just made it even more sweeter. Because <laughs> I can't stand that man. Um, him, him and Frankie boy. Um, but yeah, seeing that, I was like, yeah, that makes it all the more sweet. Because he'll be fuming that he's come to Leeds United. But there you go. We won the race to sign the kid, just like we have with all the other names that I've mentioned. Um, we're now going to move on to Mateus Pereira. Mateus Pereira is a player that I would love to see 
come to Leeds United. If I could pick any player that dropped out of the Premier League, it would have been Mateus Pereira from West Brom. Um, and it turns out, guys, he's been left out of West Bromwich Albion's squad yesterday amid reports claiming that um, the attacker is a target for a number of Premier League clubs. Why wouldn't he be? Apparently, them clubs are Aston Villa, West Ham, Crystal Palace, and of course, Leeds United. I do believe the manager was saying, look, we're happy to keep him here as long as he's on board. But with him being left out of their squad for pre-season, you would imagine he's definitely not on board and he's wanting to move away. Um, now, I did read a report yesterday that apparently his initial desire is to join a club playing European football. Um, this has been reported by ESPN Brazil uh, and they have claimed that he wants to play European football. However, they are now claiming that he's open to a move to Ellen Road. Even though we're not playing European football, maybe he sees it as a perfect um, club to go to that are chasing European football next season. Look, I'd just be happy with top 10. That's just my opinion. I think it'll be tougher next year for us. No second season syndrome. But I just keep mentioning to you guys and I continue to do it. The fact that all these factors happened last season and the top four still ended up being the same top four from the season before. This season, it's going to be totally different kettle of fish. You're going to have fans back in the grounds, which will help Leeds United, by the way. But you're also going to have big-time squads that have had decent layoff and are ready and raring to go. Um, I've already seen, you know, from, from some of the clubs ahead of us that are making some key acquisitions. One of them, by the way, not being Everton. I still don't understand the signing of Damari Gray or Andros Townsend. I think they're going backwards, which gives us another chance to climb further up the table. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, as I say, the baggy star is interested in a move to Leeds by what I'm reading. Um, of course, like I've mentioned, there's a host of clubs uh, after him. It was West Brom's standout performer last term. Um, naturally, they got relegated. He's not going to want to stay in the championship. He wanted European football. Maybe he's not quite at that level yet from them clubs that are in European football. So therefore, they're not making that move. So is he saying, right, OK, I'll be willing to look elsewhere. But listen, if we could sign Mateus Pereira, I'd be all over it. I would, because... The way my mind works, and there's a there's a lot of people that may watch this video or that are out there in the Twitter sphere that know a lot more about the game than me, and will say, mm, I don't quite see what he will add. But all I can see is Tyler Roberts last season. And I rate Tyler Roberts. I was having a debate with my brother, actually, and he was saying, nah, he's not for me. But I think he's good, and I think he will come good. And we've seen that. He got his goal towards the back end of last season. Hopefully, he'll push on. But the reason I make that comparison is if if I was to swap Tyler Roberts with Mateus Pereira last season, the amount of positions that Roberts got into in terms of goal scoring opportunities and the potential to assist a player for a goal, if that's Mateus Pereira, the outputs are a lot more. OK, they might not be the pressing side of the game. I'm not too sure. Others may tell me different. But I just look at that and think Mateus Pereira giving me. I would take him all day long. Another player, of course, I would take is Cooper Miners. Um, he is he has come out now and admitted, I think, to be honest, guys, when, when I've seen this, I know I think 95% of the Leeds United fan base would be on board with this, to bring in Cooper Miners. Uh, the uh, midfielder currently playing it is at Alkmaar. Uh, he's actually come out um, and, and has admitted that he is in talks over a move away from AZ Alkmaar. Um, Leeds, Arsenal, there is a host of clubs, Wren, Roma, Liverpool, Bayern Munich, Atalanta, they're all interested in him. And Cooper Miners refused to disclose which clubs are actually in negotiations for him. Uh, but he spoke to Football um, International via Soccer News yesterday. Um, and as I say, he didn't give much away in terms of who the club will be. But just to quote him, he says, I am, I am not a player who is going to fake injuries or play weird games. I have told the club who I am talking to and how things are going. So in other words, he's saying to Alkmaar, look, I'm not going to fake injury. I'm not going to play poor games, but I am telling them that I am looking to move elsewhere. He says, I've been in constant close contact when clubs have come forward. And he says clubs, plural, plural. There is a number of players. So whenever they're speaking to Cooper Miners, he's going back to where said Alkmaar and saying, look, I'm in contact with this club. Um, he said, we have agreed that I will continue to report how my head is and that they indicate what they expect from me. 
that has been going very well so far. So if in time his head gets turned and he's like, look, I can't really concentrate, he's just being honest. And I like that. I like that from Cooper Miners, the fact that he's having that relationship with his club, letting them know step by step, no shaky, underhand kind of tactics. Um, and he says, there are clubs where I could have been by now. You know, I could have already moved, is what he's saying. But then more clubs come. And that also pays a part. In that sense, it is a luxury problem, which makes it more difficult because you start talking and thinking again. So he's already said, look, I could have moved already. And then another club wants me. And we have to talk and think again. I have to go speak to my agent, my family. And I'm like, mm, what do I do? You know, now it's clear that is an Altmar want this sorted out because he went on to say that before all those talks are scheduled, days or weeks pass by again. The the reactions of all the different parties also take time. But AZ knows which clubs are interested and want to get around the table. AZ Altmar will be, you know, this is big money for them. This is big money for them. So they'll be going to him, right, let us know which clubs are talking to you so we can get them around the table and start talking feeds. Now, do I expect Leeds United have reached out? Yes. Do I expect us to win that race with the clubs that are mentioned? I think we'll struggle. I'm not going to lie to you. But I have faith in Victor Orta to be able to present a package to Cooper Miners that will look good, that will shade him towards our direction. Now, if then a Bayern Munich came on because they're looking to move Goretzka on, for example, then you're dead in the water. These are the facts, right? But I have... I have faith in in order but then as well when i think about it, i think right okay let's say for example Leeds united are one of them clubs that have contacted cooper miners then he hasn't chosen us because auto would have we know what auto does right let's see what happened with furpo he went over he quarantined everyone else wanted to do zoom calls with him Auto went over quarantined got him around the dinner table he would have put on that same charm offensive with the Cooper Miners if indeed Leeds are interested. Why wouldn't they be? I'm assuming they are. But if he's put on that charm offensive and he's still not a Leeds United player, then that throws it up in the air, right? He may not have, but let's say he has, yeah? The fact he's Leeds, not a Leeds United player now throws it up in the air. But then again, if Leeds United do come in and auto puts on the charm offensive and then Atalanta and uh, Bayern Munich are going, we might be interested in you yet, mate then he's going to wait it out, right? So it's one to keep our eyes on. I know that a lot of Leeds United fans would be well on board with that signing. A potential outgoing, well, two, two, no, three, three. See, I don't know what day it is, man. Three potential outgoings now. Leif Davis, okay? So apparently he was moving on to Bournemouth. Apparently that deal has now collapsed, okay? Talks over a season-long loan deal had reached an advanced stage between the two clubs, but apparently that's collapsed. I don't know why it's collapsed. Maybe Leif hasn't been happy with his chat with Scott Parker? I don't know. I don't know, but it looks like Leif Davis, for the moment, is staying at Leeds United. Um, one outgoing that will be hap happening um, is a, a guy by the name of Brooklyn and Fenku. I've probably hammered that. But apparently Man City have agreed to sign Leeds United's rising star, Brooklyn and Fenku. Terms have been agreed with the player and he is set to link up with their academy setup. Now, the reason you might not know much about this kid, I believe he's around about 14. I believe he's around about 14. I think we signed him from Wortley Juniors, where Calvin was from, I I, I think. Uh, from their under-11 side, this is how good of a kid this is. Like, I think he knew, he was around 10, 11 when we signed him on a three-year deal. He spent the last three years at Leeds United, and now Man City have come in to sign him. That's why he probably never heard of the kid. I've had to do a little bit of research and myself, but yeah, Brooklyn and Fenku, apparently he's due to join City. He's around about 14. I may be wrong. Guys, but from what I can gather from that, again, I've seen the comments in it saying, well, never heard of the kid, never heard of the kid. Well, you're not going to do it at that age, but obviously Man City will be sending scouts all over the country, man. They've got the they've got the dollar-dollar bill, y'all. Um, so, yeah, apparently Brooklyn and Fenku is going to be joining up with Manchester City. Uh, another exit as well is Bobby Kamwa, um, Leeds United youngster, has been handed a trial at League One side Rotherham. United after impressing after an initial uh, tie, I think, against Harrogate Town. But, yeah, um, a few potential outgoings. If that deal for Brooklyn and Fenku is good, of course, he's got many years ahead of him. But it's a little bit disappointing when you think, wow, Man City had signing a kid that young. Leeds signed him at 10-year-old. He must be good. He must be really good. Um, but we'll have to wait and see. Some players, as we see, go 
and then nothing's ever heard of them. So we'll have to wait and see. But that was your episode of the Daily Leads. Thank you, as always, for watching. Have a great Friday. Have a great weekend. And I will see you bright-eyed, bushy-tailed on Saturday morning. Peace out. Leads, leads, leads.